Hello everybody, Defense here, and welcome back to our immersive engineering playtorial. This is episode three, and we're going to get started on a little bit of power-related stuff today. I have already set up a bunch of the stuff so I don't have to run around. And the first piece we actually have to do is I had to go out and find a bunch of nickel. So I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of grabbing in between. We also did a little bit more um, enchanting. So we have a steel sword with looting three, a steel pickaxe with fortune three. I also do have a silk touch book so I can make another, where is it? All right. Nope, that's unbreaking. My silk touch is still over there. Uh, so I do still have some books so we can make a silk touch one. Uh, but right now I needed fortune because we needed a bunch of aluminum. It went down, extended my mines all the way down to 57? I think it was 57. And kind of started working down there. Uh, one, because we can find diamonds down there. And two, because... Is it in here? Where is it? Uh, right here. Nickel is found between negative 8 and negative 64. Uh, actually, I think it's 24 and negative 64, but most commonly below negative 8. Um, and I thought, hey, we'll swing down to the bottom. We'll do for that. We'll do for diamonds. And the only thing that I need up top really is this. But you also find lead way down there. And aluminum, I think it's rare down there, but I think you can find it. So aluminum and coal, we need to search a bit higher up for. So that was pretty much part of our prep for the day. And let's actually get this. I forgot this makes two of each. I, I only did eight because I didn't want to waste a piece of coal because coal is kind of expensive for us. But... We're going to start by making the first piece of equipment we're going to need to make a windmill and a water wheel. I'm going to make a second one of these. I only am, I'm only set up for one, but we've got everything we need for the electric dynamo, I think is what it's called. And normal, so what you need for that is to make a copper plate, which is made from an engineer's hammer and a copper ingot. You then use your engineer's wire cutters and that plate to turn it into wire. Uh, you need a total of four wires and either of the two sticks. It'll work with sticks or treated sticks. So you'll see here it still does the same thing. No matter which version of these sticks which, that is in there, which is pretty nice. Uh, once you do that, you have to make uh, eight of these. So you'll have to do this twice. And that creates a copper coil block. And then you need three iron, two redstone, I looked this up and I just noticed that I think the tutorial I'm looking at may be out of date. I couldn't remember how to craft this. Where was it? Kinetic Dynamo. Oh, okay. They did change it slightly, but I think I have the item to make this in one of these chests somewhere. Nope. Well, a little outdated data. Not the best thing, in the, not the worst thing in the world. So let's take a look. What is the piece that we need? Um, an iron mechanical component, which is four iron plates. So let's grab a little bit more iron. One, two, three. Luckily, this stuff's already set up. Boom. And a piece of copper, which we already had in there. Look at that. What did I just do wrong? That was weird. It wasn't showing up. Okay, so um, I probably should double check all of these recipes, but the rest are so plain, I think it'll be easy. But that is your kinetic dynamo, and that creates energy via movement which you get from the water wheel and the windmill. So for the water wheel, you need water wheel segments. And I'm going to make three full water wheels, because I'm, if I remember correctly from when I played last, three was really the max you could get on a kinetic dynamo. Uh, so let's grab all 12 of those. And then you have to do those around a steel ingot, and that creates your water wheels. Which is pretty straightforward. Uh, the windmill is pretty similar. It's got a separate thing here. It requires eight of these windmill blades, which is... Uh, I just got rid of the crafting recipe. That was dumb. Uh, recipe. Uh, three treated planks and four sticks. And then once those are done, you do the same thing except around iron. So you can do the wind power a little bit earlier uh, because you don't really need... Oh, well, actually, you do need the, the treated wood, so never mind. Ignore that. You can do it straight with just having a coal coke oven and not having gone into the nether yet. And that's the two of these. So the two of these will connect to a kinetic dynamo. Let me see if I can. Let's grab some blocks real quick. Ooh, oh, I got an achievement. Sweet. So this guy here is what connects to it. So this is our water wheel. 
They seem bigger than I remember. Uh, the most effective way to do the water is to start it here and it flows back down and under and that gives you the most points of contact and will make this go faster and then you just connect these right onto the end like a so and you'll have a fully functioning water wheel I don't how I don't know where I'm putting it yet so we haven't set it up but once we're done running through this I'll figure out where I want to put it and we'll do it there I think yeah so this one is just about in the right spot hold on Uh, I think I need to have it output to something before it'll spin. There we go. Nope. It just had to break the blocks. This one just works on wind. Um, I did I did read up on this because I did know there was some changes between the 1.12 version and the 1.19 version that I'm using now. Um, this used to be affected by height. It is not anymore. So it used to be the higher up in the world you had it, the faster it would spin. Now the only thing that affects it is weather. Um, it produces a standard amount here. It produces more in a rainstorm and more in a thunderstorm because there's going to be more wind during those times. And that's pretty much how those all work. You can, so you'll see when it's in, in item form, it has uh, the kind of coating on the blades there you'll see on my right. You can make the coating for that using the industrial hemp. Um, let me run you through. Nah, we're not going to worry about it. It's a really easy recipe. Uh, if you guys want to look into it, use the string to make uh, the string to make the tough fabric, and that so that's your recipe there. And then you use those to make your windmill sail. And then you need eight sail covers to cover it. As far as I could find, they don't actually change anything, so it's really just for looks. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of leave it for now. We'll deal with it later. So one of the things that I want to correct while I was building our thumbnail here, which you probably would have seen at the start of the video. Uh, these actually do make a difference. I don't know if the info I read earlier was wrong or not, but if we go and set up one of another one of these real quick, you will see a visible difference in the speed at which they move. And this, more speed is more power. This is already connecting, so this one's already outputting more. Uh, let's see, where's my piece? Right here. So this one's sitting at 35, there we go. This one sits at an output of 35, and this one sits at an output of 11. So it is very much recommended that you do create the covers for these. And the way you put them on is you do attach this thing, and then you come up and you just right click the middle. So if we come on in windmill sails, and then that's one sail, two sails, three, four, and you just right click the middle, and you'll see it immediately speeds up. Uh, so it is very, very much worth it, especially where it jumps from 11 to 35. Later, But that anyway. is everything in relation to early game generating power right there. Uh, there is another item called a, um, a thermal generator. Uh, not, it's not called a thermal generator. Thermoelectric generator. There we go. And early, early game, uh, you'll pretty much use... So this here creates power based on temperature differentials. Uh, we are going to make that one. Uh, I just didn't have everything. I don't think I had everything to make it, and that's why I held off. Uh, let's go back into this. This. Uh, that's why I made the constant tan plates. Okay. Or the constant tan. Did I pull those out of here? I did. Let's turn them into plates real quick. One, two, three, four. I think I only need four, but we can change it. Uh, and that's what's right here. I knew I had it somewhere. So with this, the bigger the temperature differential, the more this will output. Uh, there is an item that we can make to view the output. I will be making it uh, later on once we get everything set up so that way I can show you the different power uh, variables between the three different versions of power making that we can do right now. But this guy here, as I said, so it's opposing side generate energy based on the difference between the two temperatures. Uh, the, list is, the list below contains other non-fluid blocks uh, which can be used so you pretty much you put lava on one side right now so uh, we have blue ice which is 200,000 packed ice 240 and then it just keeps going up 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 so water's 300 lava's 13 and then uranium is 2000 so what you'd want is a block of two blocks of uranium in the water slots uh, in the, well in any of the two slots and then two packed ice in the other slots so uranium uranium uh, blue ice, blue ice, or packed ice, blue ice, because that's the coldest ice you can get. 
and that'll be your largest temperature variance, which will create the most power. Right now, we're just using, uh, let's see, where did it go? We're using uh, water and lava, which are only a thousand different. So that's, that's pretty close. Uh, I'm sure I could get, I, I haven't seen any ice around, so I could just build an ice farm up high and start working towards creating uh, blue ice. But I think that's a good start for our proof of concept right now. So let me actually just kick this back into here. And we're going to move on to our next item. And this is power storage and power transfer, which I think was pretty useful for us. So we have accumulators. I had to remember it because I thought they were called batteries. But there are three different versions you're going to use in-game. There is a creative one, uh, but we're not going to worry about that. We have the LV accumulator, which is low voltage, the MV, which is medium voltage, and the HV, which is high voltage. And they all have similar crafting recipes. They just use higher tiers of metal. So this one here is iron ingots and lead plates and a bucket of redstone acid, which is pretty simple to make. Uh, you can do it like this. It's four redstone and a bucket of water. Uh, you can also, there's another recipe for it using a mixer, which we haven't made yet. It's a multi-block structure, which we haven't really gotten into yet, except for these guys here. So once we do get into them, uh, we'll be able to talk about that a bit more. But that's how you get a bucket of redstone acid. And that's one bucket of water and four redstone, just as shown before. And then we have the medium voltage accumulator which uh, they each store different amounts. And this one here uses steel, nickel, and iron. So whereas this one just uses lead and iron. And last but not least is the high voltage accumulator. This is gonna be your higher storage capacity. It uses a hop graphite ingot, which requires hop graphite and this, okay, we can do it. An industrial squeezer with some coke dust. So we have to put uh, cold coke into a, pole, into a crusher which will make that, and then you have to get uh, it's eight coal dust to one hot uh, graphite, and then you smelt that down into your ingot, and then it's steel, steel, and aluminum. Or Sorry, they have it aluminum in this pack. So uh, we could probably do the middle one no problem right now. I could do a medium voltage capacitor. Uh, this one, no, because it requires a crusher. So let's get that. So that is our accumulator. So we have a place for our power to go, now we need a way to get power from one place to another. So with that, we have the same thing, low, medium, and high voltage. Uh, what are these ones? Connectors. Uh, so they have, again, the low, the medium, and the high. The low is the one we're gonna craft right now. It's any four terracotta and three copper ingots. The next step up is electrum ingots in the same style. And the step after that is aluminum. Uh, these can only, I know the lower ones can only be placed 16 blocks apart. I would have to, I didn't look into the other ones, which is probably bad of me. Um, but these can only be 16 blocks apart. And we can actually show you that real quick. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it's the spools of wire. Yeah. So we'll go and we're going to put one of these down right here. And then we're going to connect this. And you'll see down below you have linking from. But we're going to get to a point where it's going to turn red. And that's because it's too far away. So right there is where we would need to put one of these to connect to this. Uh, the other thing is the wires in this game sag. So they, just like wires in real life, gravity affects them and they kind of sag. If it goes through a block, it won't, it won't let you place it. So that's why you have these things. I think it's the wooden post. I, I probably should have double checked. Yeah, so this can go here. And then there are a couple different ways to connect to this, if I remember correctly. Um, I think it's the hammer that adds like arms and stuff. Let me double check. Yeah, so depending on which way you're facing. So let me pop this off and we'll go hammer. I think they can only go opposite sides. Yeah, so on or off. And that's pretty much how it's gonna work. Boom and boom. So if we were to have this side come out here, you can actually go and put these on top. Like so. And that way, when you have the the, the dangle, the, uh, the, the, yeah, we'll just call it dangle. Uh, it'll not intersect with any blocks on the ground so you don't need to worry about it. And these are pretty inexpensive to craft. 
It's just treated wood fences and a stone brick. And that's what it caused. So it's two fences, one brick, and it creates this power pole here. So one of the downside, well, I don't really, I wouldn't really say a downside. One of the other things about the LV wire connectors is they only can connect once. Only one thing can connect to that. So you'll connect in and that's it. Uh, and this is the only way to get power from these devices to the batteries or the machines that are using them. But what you can have in the middle are wire relays. So if we set this up real quick. So here we go. It's a little janky, but it is a setup showing you guys how you could do this and how it would all work. So we have our dynamo here, which has got a windmill on it. It's spinning. And we have our connector here on the back to make sure it can output power. And then we connected a cable from here to the relay, which again, as I said, a relay can have multiple lines coming out of it. So we're gonna go here and then I don't think I can go to here. Okay, yeah, it's just too far away, I think. Oh no, I think the windmill might be blocking it. Yeah, so I'm gonna assume that it's the windmill that blocks it. So I can't send it across to there, but you can connect them uh, to multiple outputs. So here, we'll put this guy here, just so we have an example so you can see. There we go. So you'll see it goes to there, and then this guy can go to here, and then so on. So it'll be able to travel around. Oh, that one's already got one connection to it. Uh, ignore me, that's why that wouldn't work. Because that, as I said, can only have one connection. And that's where the relays come in handy because you can set up a relay on here and have stuff connect to the relay and continue on down your network and then off a relay down to a standard connector that is right down there, the low voltage wire connectors. And so we can see how much power is in here. I've created the engineer's multimeter. So what we can do is we can come on over here and can we not see, I wish we could, I thought we could see how much this outputs. No, okay, well that's kind of a bummer, but I can look here and you can see energy stored 11. So that's how much power is going through this piece here. Uh, can we see on the wires? No. And those, these do not read at all either, but you can come on over here and look at this. So we can store, uh, what's that, 100,000, so a million. Uh, and we're currently at 97,000, which is good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. So you can see it's steadily going up. Uh, what's that, 120 per? Something like that? No, definitely wrong. A good amount either way. Oh, okay, so it is only, okay, so it's 100,000, even though it's got the K on the end. So I like it. I think that's going to do very good. I just wanted to show you guys how that works. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a second dynamo and I'm gonna set up these guys, maybe get some other batteries, create a battery bank. That is unknown yet, but I wanna get a little area set up for uh, power production. So we'll get the dynamo for the water mill, the windmill, and the thermal electric generator set up. And I'll get all these crafting uh, benches here cleaned up as well. We officially have power. I've decided to keep the power storage down here for now. Once we figure out what I want to actually do in this area, we'll probably start decorating a bit more. Uh, but I do want to stay out here. I think it'd be a good spot to be. Oh, it's almost night. Uh, but I did craft up, what's this, three, four, five, six, seven of the medium batteries. So the medium voltage batteries here. Uh, the medium voltage accumulators. Uh, they just require nickel and iron plates and then steel rather than the stuff we were working with earlier. So I've got those down, so let's pull out our multimeter, and you'll see there's about 150,000, yeah, flux in here. Uh, this one's full. This is the one we filled earlier that's a low volt. These ones, though, take a mil each, so we'll have a good amount of power stored up, which will be very good for us. Uh, we don't have anything that requires power right now, but we will be getting into power pretty soon, and I'd rather have a bunch already stored up so we don't really have to wait for it. So one of the things I found out while doing this, uh, you can climb these like a ladder. So if you walk forward into them, you go up, and if you let go, you go down. The other thing is you get zapped if you touch them. Uh, they don't really do, well, the low voltage ones don't really do a lot of damage. So you can see, 
Yeah, it did about a heart and a half over that time period there, which isn't bad, but we can insulate them. I'll show you guys how to do that in a moment. Uh, but what I want to talk about while we're right here is the amount of power that's being output by all of these. And in my opinion, which one I would probably recommend for early game. I don't know if you can stack multiple windmills sticking out of this. I, I feel you could since you can do it with water wheels. Uh, so if we look at it, this is putting out 11 flux per tick. Uh, and that's one of these. So obviously if you were to just triple that, that's 33. Uh, and one of the things you can do to get more rain is not sleep at night. If you don't sleep at night, the chance of storms increase. So you'll get more rain, which for creating videos probably isn't good, but for playing and getting more power could be very helpful. So if you have stuff you can do at night, you're able to just kind of continue on with that. Uh, but these over here are creating 68. So three of these is 68. And I think, so three of these would only be 33. So yeah, in base, you know, in, in this type of weather, 100% of the time, you know, I'd say these guys here. Uh, but if you are willing to, you know, run through the storms all the time and leave it, this one may be better. I am curious if it tells you in the book. Hold on. No, it just says results in stronger winds and increasing speeds. Uh, so if you guys do want to know it specifically, um, I'm sure there's probably a bunch of tutorials out there. But I think it goes 11 to 25 to 30 something. 37? I could be wrong. That that That's probably wrong, but I think I remembered seeing it at some point. And it's like 11, 25, 37, or, or maybe 42 in the thunderstorms. Uh, but it's roughly around those numbers, so it is a big it is a big jump. So you'll be able to do that. But these guys here, they don't really take up a lot of space. They can be hidden. I'm deciding if I want to cover this up or if I want to make it like a piece of the mountain and just kind of have like a pond up here that rolls down. We'll have to decide that. But this here, just on this, puts out 30. So this one here takes up way less space. Um, so it could be better. So you got to think, uh, well, let's actually look at space-wise here. And I, I feel you could have these flow down and maybe do like an every other stack. I'd have to play around with that in a creative world to see a good layout for these. But I'm sure you could get a really good checkered layout of these that would take up less space than this and output more even early game. So if you can get a good setup for this, I'd say go for it, especially if you find a biome that has blue ice already. Because if we remember, in our book here, we'll go into power and wires, thermoelectric generators. Uh, blue ice is 200, and lava is 1,300. So there's an 1,100 degree difference. And that, aside from uranium, is going to be your best flip. So if you find, like, the new mountain biomes, I think, can have blue ice. I know that the... Uh, iceberg biomes can have blue ice. You can also just get packed ice or ice and it's nine of this to make one of these and then nine of these to make one of these. So it wouldn't be that hard to get a hold of the stuff for it. You can even do a bucket of snow if you find the powdered snow and it's honestly just better. <laughs> um, but I think it's a good start. So honestly, I think oop, the wrong thing. Um, in the place of, of what I would choose right now uh, would be these here, the thermoelectric generators, then the water wheels, then the windmills. And as I said, just because of the grid patterns you can make with these, I think they can be hyper efficient. These are really good early game because it just requires some iron and some wood. And that's literally it there. And I will obviously end the, um, the dynamo right there. But that's enough on that. I'm going to show you guys how to insulate your wire, which isn't too crazy. Uh, oh, ow, I got zapped. <laughs> Most of the time, you don't have to worry about it. But if you're running low run wires or if you have them like on here, you're going to get zapped a lot. So you got to watch out for it. So let's hop into my current pile of junk. Let's grab some of that, grab some of that. So I already actually have some insulated wire because I needed it to create something a moment ago. Now let's head on into here, grab a stack of that. So what you need to make is, yoink, uh, R, R, okay, that is what I thought it was. We'll just throw down some more of this, four of those, and that should be, I think I need one more. 
Uh, I need my wire, which is going to be in here. Toolbox, great thing to have. I wish, so one of the things, oh, you can put, oh, never mind, ignore me. So you can put it down. I wonder if there is, no, okay. There may be a control that allows you to open it up, but I like being able to do that now. And we're going to go into here, and we are going to our, oh, I need more. Whoa. Boom, boom, and then uh, recipe, and boom. So this takes four wire, and you can do this with the low or medium voltage wire. You cannot do it with the high voltage wire. There is no way to insulate the high voltage wires. Uh, but your low voltage and medium voltage are done similarly to this. So let's do insulated. So on your medium, uh, it's the same thing. So it's just the tough fabric and your MV coils. Uh, insulated glass. Hmm. I think that's used for making the bigger unit. These things here. Yeah, the HV relays. So that's pretty much how you make the insulated wire, and that'll keep you from getting zapped. Uh, and this stuff is really easy to get a hold of. I'm just running this farm here, and I very rarely harvest it. You just chop the top off. Keep your seeds. They are useful for later. Just throwing that out there. We'll get into that in the future in relation to biodiesel, uh, which is creating power using machines. So... And that produces a lot more power. But I think this is going to be where we're going to wrap it up today, everybody. Uh, I hope you did enjoy it. And I hope you learned something. Again, if there is something that you saw that I may not have done, or if you know something like that I didn't talk about today in relation to power, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. But as always, I want to thank you for stopping in. I hope you did enjoy. And I hope you have a nice night, day, morning, evening, or whatever it is, or wherever you are. This is my defense. I hope to see you again soon. Peace.